Irritable bowel syndrome is a common disorder characterized by recurrent gastrointestinal symptoms, often with a link to stress, and has a significant impact on quality of life. Syndrome means a collection of signs and symptoms, and in this case, the main ones are recurrent abdominal pain and changes in bowel habits, which divides irritable bowel syndrome into subtypes, including irritable bowel syndrome with constipation, with diarrhea, mixed irritable bowel syndrome, or irritable bowel syndrome that does not fit into the other three subtypes. These symptoms usually happen in the daytime and are often relieved after a bowel movement. Bloating, flatulence or gassiness, and urgency to pass a bowel movement are other symptoms. Systemic findings like fever, joint pains, bleeding, and anemia or weight loss are not seen in irritable bowel syndrome. Around 5-15% to of the population worldwide are thought to have irritable bowel syndrome, and it is seen more commonly in females than in males, with it being around 1.5 to 3 times more common. Although irritable bowel syndrome can affect any age, the prevalence is higher in patients under the age of 50, and in roughly 50% of cases, symptoms will have started before the age of 35. A parental family history of irritable bowel syndrome means an individual has twice the likelihood of suffering irritable bowel syndrome themselves. However, there is less than 20% concordance in monozygotic twins. This suggests that it is likely learned behaviour rather than genetics causing this link. There also seems to be a link with gastrointestinal infections with around 10% of irritable bowel syndrome patients developing the syndrome after gastroenteritis, and some studies quote the risk of developing irritable bowel syndrome is six times higher after a gastrointestinal infection. Stress is another potential trigger, which on the surface seems to fit as other stress-linked disorders like fibromyalgia, chronic headaches, chronic fatigue, and temporomandibular joint disorder are seen in around 50% of irritable bowel syndrome sufferers. There is also a high prevalence of psychiatric conditions in people diagnosed with irritable bowel syndrome. The exact cause is unknown. However, it is thought that the gut-brain axis is affected, which is a form of signalling that occurs between the gastrointestinal tract the immune system, and the central nervous system. Changes in the microbiota leads to a change in the molecules released in the gut, which can be sensed by the nervous system. And vice versa, changes in the central nervous system, for example a stress causing a change in the hypothalamic pituitary axis, can change the gut microbiota and intestinal epithelium, which may cause systemic manifestations. There is no specific test for irritable bowel syndrome. The diagnosis is based on the clinical findings and exclusion of other causes. The Rome 4 criteria include recurrent abdominal pain at least one day per week in the last three months associated with two or more of a relation to defecation, an associated change in the frequency of the stool, and an associated change in the form or appearance of the stool. Other examinations that may be done include a stool culture to exclude infectious disease, and lab tests to look for celiac disease, inflammation, anemia, or a thyroid disorder. Endoscopy can also be done to exclude malignancy or peptic ulcer disease, and typically this does not reveal inflammation in patients with irritable bowel syndrome. We already said that irritable bowel syndrome can significantly impact the quality of life and it can increase the risk of anxiety and depression. There can also be an increased risk of hemorrhoids due to the bowel habit changes, but there is no increased risk of malignancy. Lifestyle and dietary advice is often first line, including stress relief, 
which may be achieved through exercise or meditation. Dietary advice initially would include regular meals, reducing caffeine and alcohol intake, and advising on fibre, particularly soluble fibre like ispagula and limitation of insoluble fibre like bran. Probiotics may also have a role. If the first line dietary advice is not effective, then an assessment by a dietitian can be done looking at options like a low FODMAP diet. If these measures are unsuccessful, then medications may be offered based on the symptoms. For abdominal pain, antispasmodic agents like hyacine or peppermint oil are first line, followed by tricyclic antidepressants or selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. For constipation, laxatives are first line, followed by secretagogues like linoclotide. Diarrhea is initially treated with antidiarrheals like loperamide, followed by serotonin antagonists like allocetron or ondansetron. If all these measures have not worked, then psychological therapies may be useful, including cognitive behavioural therapy and hypnotherapy.